uh, the Lions in the semifinals 2015. That's the the epic uh, Lindsey Bird photo after she hits the free throws. And if you hear Ginger High Calvin tell that story, she hit the free throws and the, the hands were in the air. But coach's worry was there's still a few seconds oh, on yeah. the clock. Get back, play defense, and, and put this thing away. But uh, they would also defeat Freed Hardeman in 2017 and earn a return trip to the Fab Four in Billings. Uh, Ginger High Calvin 7-3 over the Lions. She's 5-0 versus Coach Josh Epperson. See you winning all three matchups last year, including a Mid-South Conference quarterfinal matchup. Then she, uh, as they advance to the semifinals with the victory, Ashley McGeorge en route to her most outstanding player award, posted 21-8 in the Campbellsville victory. But these are two story programs. You go back to Donna Wise and then Dale Neal for Freed Hardeman, who sort of laid the foundation for these two, uh, these two terrific programs. Programs. And here tonight, we get to sit back and watch a couple of uh, undefeated clubs uh, duke it out. We, we do, and, and both teams undefeated, not only overall, but also in the conference. So this is huge in terms of, uh, you know, kind of getting that early win to, uh, now obviously we'll have to go down there later in the year, but uh, this, this Freed Hardman team uh, is probably going to be our best test uh, to date. Uh, but but Campbellsville uh, University Lady Tiger team, they have been playing extremely well. Uh, also, so it should be a. It, it almost feel probably a little bit about like a March uh, March Madness game, uh, just how good these two programs are. So be exciting to watch, and uh, it's great once again to to have a, a home game uh, here in the PAL. The Lady Tigers 5-0, <clears throat> as Benji mentioned, there 3-0 in conference play. All five of their wins have been on the road. The Lady Tigers, the two of them will say, uh, we say on the road, but uh, two of those wins, neutral site games, the three conference games have all been on the road. In fact, this is the first game that the Lady Tigers have played in the state of Kentucky. They played two in McKenzie, Tennessee, then they went to, uh, actually I take that back, they did play Lindsey Wilson, but uh, it's the first in the uh, Eastern time zone, I believe. <laughs> and uh, so you had the game against Lindsey Wilson, but then the first four games of the season were all in the state of Tennessee for Freed Hardeman on the flip side, this is their first road game of right. the year. So an interesting dynamic there. You would think that uh, Campbellsville coming home tonight and uh, being here in this venue would certainly uh, help them out. It's been a team thus far. They've been uh, a bit on cruise control at times. Well, <clears throat> playing here in your own in own gymnasium, it's where you practice. So obviously the familiarity of that will be something good uh, for this Lady Tiger team. Flip side on that, Freed Harmon, they've played all their games at home. You, sometimes you see Georgetown College do that. They'll play a lot of games at home before they get into conference play. I always like how Coach Colvin and, and especially Coach Vernon do their do their uh, early schedule games. They go on the road, even though it may be at some neutral sites, they get that feeling of being out on the road uh, and, and playing, which is extremely important. But here we are, conference game December 1st. Looks like we're going to have a pretty decent crowd. They're starting to, to fill in here. So uh, as you would expect, uh, this, this area loves uh, basketball, and uh, it's good to see the pep band here as well. So uh, all in all, this is going to be this is going to be a tough contest for both teams, and it's going to come down to who can execute the best, uh, not you know not have, commit turnovers, the same things we say each and every year. Take care of the ball, defend well, limit second chance opportunities, make sure you knock down some shots. As a mechanic might say, you're going to get your oil check. You're going to get your oil check. That's you're right. Figure out what you got under the hood and uh, see who the better team is here this evening in the PAL Athletic Center. We've still got about eight minutes on our pregame clock. Warm-ups taking place here at the PAL Center. So we'll step away, take a two-minute timeout. We'll come back and continue our pregame coverage. You're following the Lady Tigers on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. Jason, let's go see your room. What if you could feel in control of your retirement in just a few clicks? At aceyourretirement.org, you can. Start with a free three-minute chat with Avo, your friendly digital retirement coach. Just answer some simple questions like, how do you feel about your ability to save for retirement? Or in how many years do you want to retire? 
to get free action items customized just for you. Get your retirement back on track at aceyourretirement.org. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. Welcome back inside the Powell Athletic Center. Matt Payton and Benji Kelly here courtside as Campbellsville University squares off with Freed Hardeman in a Mid-South Conference doubleheader tonight. The Lions visiting from Henderson, Tennessee. Enter with an 8-0 record. The Lady Tigers at 5-0 on the season. Both of these two teams boasting 3-0 Mid-South Conference marks. They are two of three unbeaten Mid-South Conference teams as they join Thomas Moore. Thomas Moore with eight wins overall, so they have just the one non-conference game left on their schedule. So here tonight, somebody going to get lost number one in, in league play, Benji. And uh, we've talked about this a lot on the men's side. It's so hard to win on the road as home teams. The goal oftentimes is just hold serve. And uh, for Freed Hardeman, this would be quite the feather in their cap. They got Thomas Moore, I believe, once last year, and it was at – uh, Crestview Hills and the Connor Convocation Center. So uh, they'd love nothing more than to come into the PAL and pick off the Lady Tigers. Campbellsville certainly has to be on their game. Well, they have to be on their game. Number three team in the nation. Uh, and as you said, coming into PAL, a lot of times you got to be at least five to seven points better than, than the home team if you're going to walk away with a victory. And uh, this Freed Hardman team, as we know, is uh, they're, they're eight and oh. Uh, last year, we had a hard fought game. Uh, here at the PAL, also, if it wasn't for Courtney Pritchett down there last year, we would not have won uh, that game on the road. And then once again, a tough game during the conference tournament there in the quarterfinals. And uh, so they they uh, they defend well. Uh, they like to probably will play some zone here tonight, uh, possibly switch up to man when some of our our shooters come in off the bench. Uh, but uh, this is going to be uh, you know a hard fought game here for this Lady Tiger team. They're going to have to execute extremely well was able to watch for little practice earlier this week, and the intent is on that zone. We're going to force it inside, get it to Wilkes, get it to Luby, and uh, let them do their thing. And uh, so, uh, once again, uh, you know, it's going to be a tough game. I, I, I sound like a broken record, but you got to do the things that you – do well in order to win against this Freed Hardman team. Campbellsville boasts three players in double figures here entering play tonight, led by Caitlin Wilkes. As Benji mentioned, her 15.2 points a night for Wilkes to go with six rebounds. She and Kayla Luby have been a terrific tandem down inside. You, you take Luby's nine points and four rebounds a night, and you put those together from basically that five position. You've got uh, a player averaging 24 points and 10 rebounds. That dog will hunt, my friend. Every night, that dog will hunt. I mean, you we've got you know, and this is nothing against Ashley McGeorge last year. Ashley McGeorge played her tail off, and but she was probably not a true five person, uh, a five uh, position. Whereas you got two people here with Wilkes and Luby, uh, you get them their backs to the basket. They know how to score. But only that, you try to to uh, force them out. They can hit the mid range jumpers. Very very uh, difficult to devour, uh, to guard. So I, I look for uh, them to. Uh, for the team to really push the ball down low early, often. And then that also, what that is, what people don't realize is that frees up the perimeter as well. When they start sagging down, that'll be able to open it up for Burt, uh, for you know uh, Matty Boyle, for Sarah Sutton coming off the bench to be able to knock down those long three-pointers. The other Lady Tiger averaging double figures, Lauren Lee at 11.8 per game. And, and that should say three of those in the starting lineup. As Benji mentioned, Elizabeth Bertram, she's also in double figures at 12 points for basketball game. She has been nothing short of phenomenal coming off the bench this season for Coach Ginger High Colvin for uh, Freed Hardeman led in scoring by Rachel Satterley. She has a Satterley has a couple of Mid-South Conference Player of the Week awards under her belt. The redshirt freshman from Lawrenceburg, Kentucky right down 
the road here, and uh, she made her way to Henderson, Tennessee, to play her college ball at Freed Hardeman, and uh, she has had a terrific start to her career, 21 points per ball game, five rebounds for Satterley uh, as we interplay here tonight. And uh, as you mentioned, Benji, that post play is going to be interesting. You look at the lineup here for Coach Epperson without Kaylee Odom, who was a terrific player for them a year ago, who's out with injury. It is not a very big team in terms of size, and I think that's what you were getting at, talking about the uh, the attack for the Lady Tigers, feed it in there to Wilkes and see how they intend to guard. Obviously, a zone is gonna be uh, a big part of that as they try to maybe dig at times and, and keep things away from Caitlin Wilkes in other ways. Well, even when the team plays a zone, you can get the ball down low. It's all about penetration, uh, the angle of entry. It's all about the post player sealing that person that's in that zone. Sometimes there'll be three back on the zone. Sometimes there'll be two back. So on the offensive side, making sure that you read what defense defensive player is actually going to guard you posting up and uh, giving a, a clear passing lane for those guards to be able to hit it. So you know it's early season. It's early season because the coaches and referees are still smiling they at are each still other smiling. here That's early. That's exactly right. Uh, wait till we get into mid-year, and, and those smiles are few and far few. between. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we are about a minute or so here from the national anthem, opening prayer, and things starting lineup. So we're gonna get set to take a break momentarily as we uh, wait here for this final 40 seconds or so and, and put a bow on some of our pregame stuff. Campbellsville averaging 87 points per ball game at 53.3 percent from the floor, 40 percent from deep. Benji, the points per game, sixth in the country. They are number one in three-point percentage, number one in field goal percentage offensively. To say it has been clicking in the early season would be an understatement. Well, and that's that's what you want at the end of the day, Matt. It's who scores the most points, and this Campbellsville team has been clicking pretty much on all cylinders. Obviously, they try to clean up a little bit of uh, you know some turnovers, uh, read, reading the defense the right way, but that's early in the season. That's to be expected, uh, you know, 5-0, 8-0, it's going to be a great game. It really is. The uh, Lady Tigers and Freed Hardman Lions are set to take the floor in just a moment. They are at the respective bench areas and uh, ready for our opening prayer. We will pause for a two-minute break. If we come back before the anthem is over, you'll get to hear uh, some of the, uh, the sounds here in the Powell Athletic Center as you can catch the end of the, uh, the national anthem as we get set for tip-off here. In just a moment, you're following Lady Tiger basketball on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. I tell my son, I love you every single day. Aww. And my dad has never said that to me. Not because he doesn't love me, but because culturally it wasn't comfortable for him. Now that he's a grandfather, he says, I love you to my son every time he sees him. My advice to all the fathers out there, forget the cultural restrictions. They grow up way too fast for you to waste even a single precious moment. The family's visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? You tell me to stand tall. You tell me to stay rooted. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? The kind to hug or the kind to climb? doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. The black truck? Hey, Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna call a car. That's a smart idea. So, yeah, I know, that's why I did it. Hey, you're gonna get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm gonna get back with Christina? No. Oh. No, no. drive an hour to cheer them on as they get beat 11 to nothing in the rain, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat.
Tiger Pet Band taking care of our national anthem here tonight inside the Powell Center. Matt Payton and Benji Kelly here. We are ready for tip-off in just a moment. The starting lineup set to be announced in the Powell Center. Josh Spencer on public address here this evening as Campbellsville University and Freed Hardeman square off. Let's take a look at the starters for the visiting Lions. Josh Epperson in his third season, assisted by Abby Stutz. Today they run out K.J. White, 5'7", a senior guard from Trenton, Tennessee. Rachel Satterley, 5'6", a freshman guard from Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. Reagan Purvine, 5'7", a senior guard from Dixon, Tennessee. Madison Maher, 6'0", a graduate guard from Peoria, Illinois. And Ellie Chumley, 5'10", a freshman forward from Manchester, Tennessee. Now for the Lady Tigers, Campbellsville University's Lady Tigers, the number three ranked team in the country, Ginger High Calvin, in her 16th season. 420 wins on the ledger for Coach Calvin, five times the Conference Coach of the Year Award winner, assisted by Miranda Denny in year number 15 and Brett Sal. The Lady Tigers send out Bailey Pedigo, 5'7", a junior guard from Glasgow, Kentucky. Lauren Lee, 5'7", a sophomore guard from Liberty, Kentucky. Maddie Boyle, 5'6", a junior guard from Milledgeville, Kentucky. Courtney Pritchett, 5'8", a redshirt junior forward from Birdstown, Tennessee. And rounding out the five for the Lady Tigers, Court, uh, Caitlin Wilkes, 6'2", a junior forward from Stanford, Kentucky. And Benji, before we get started, we want to share uh, and send our condolences to the family of Courtney Pritchett. She lost an uncle this past week, and uh, it's been a difficult week for her, a difficult week for her family, obviously. And we send condolences and uh, thoughts and prayers to them during what has been a, a very difficult time. Absolutely, and uh, you know, just a tough, tough situation. Uh, for her to be able to go back and forth, uh, to be there for family. But I tell you what, she is one tough young lady. And uh, I know that this probably here tonight will be able to give her a little reprieve uh, to be able to play the game that she loves and loves uh, quite a bit. So. Campbellsville University in the home white uniforms tonight. Campbellsville across the chest in maroon with maroon numerals. A little gray trim for Campbellsville. LTB on the left leg of the shorts, actually on each leg of the shorts. The tiger paw between the shoulder blades. For Freed Hardeman, Freed Hardeman sandwiches the number in white, white trim and piping for the Lions as they have the uh, FHU lion head between the shoulder blades. For those following along on radio tonight, 88-7, the Tiger, Campbellsville University going from right to left, the Lions left to right. We are underway. Tap is controlled by Barr. Back to Freed Hardeman in Campbellsville on the defensive end to begin things as K.J. White works with the basketball. Saturday out top, Campbellsville giving chase in that patented twilight zone. Saturday going to hoist the early three. That is short. Rebound taken in by Pritchett. The Lady Tigers want to run here. Pritchett going to lead it with Boyle. Left side on the wing, Pedigo, little contact, and we're going to have an early whistle here as this will go against Pervine, who closed out on Pedigo. Gets a bit too much of Bailey, and that's the first on Pervine, the first on the Lions. We see Saturday there launch one from about five feet behind the uh, behind the arc. Campbell's doing good rebounding position there and was able to get that defensive rebound. Boyle navigates off right, back to Pedigo out top. Now Lee. Zone defense for Freed Hardeman. Entry here, Wilkes. Double team comes. Wilkes shot is short. Rebound is going to be jostled for. And we're going to have the uh, possession arrow come into play here as Campbellsville will keep it. The double thumbs thrown up down to the far end. 11 seconds remaining on the shot clock, Matt. We saw right away Campbellsville once again is trying to get that ball. Uh, actually, I think that hit the rim, so it should have reset to 20. And uh, they, they have reset it. So, Lauren Lee, the trigger gal here for Campbellsville. She'll pitch it in. Waits, there's Boyle. Boyle gonna take the quick pull-up jumper and that's over everything. Boyle a little strong on that attempt. I think she didn't realize how wide open she was and kind of forced that really rather quickly. It's almost an over and back there. Saturday just able to get it across, uh, get her body across as the pass came in. We got a walk called here as that was, is that White dribbling down inside? Uh, it's 15, yes, yeah, 15. 15, Pervine? Pervine. First turnover of the game, Campbellsville, that defense. Scoreless here, we've played almost a minute as Bailey Pedigo handling the basketball for the Lady Tigers. Into the corner, Lee bounces. Pritchett can't shoot it. Pedigo out top, extra passes, Boyle. 
She'll get by Pervine, throw up the jumper from the same spot, and there was a test out. That first one, just a little test, Benji uh, Kelly. It was. You she know, was surveying the wind conditions. The wind the conditions, and uh, she, she nailed that one perfectly. 2-0, Campbellsville, the early lead. White holds it off the wing. Pervine, a nice cut down the baseline for Chumley, lays it up and in. Nice, yeah, nice, nice offensive move there by uh, Freed Hardman. That's one th way that, that you're able to beat that zone that Campbellsville likes to play. And here we have a blocking foul called on Freed Hardigan, and that's going to go against Baher. And for Baher, her first, and that's number two on the Lions. Campbellsville will trigger it in right in front of the uh, Lady Tigers softball team on the far side. Lee off the wing. Had to go out top, extra pass, Boyle. Three on the way, that is off the mark. Well, let's hope Maddie Boyle is testing out the wind conditions on that one, too. And there's a payout coming later because uh, that one was well off the mark. Foul here going to go against Courtney Pritchett in the backcourt. Her first. Team's first. Tied at two. 8.25 to play in the first quarter. Freed Hardman back to work. Almost a double-team trap there. and Able to get it away was Pervine. Saturday back to Pervine and out. Three on the way is off the mark for White. And ball is tapped as uh, that was Chumley trying to save it in bounds. Last touched by the Lions and Campbellsville will go back to the offensive end. Good block out there by Courtney Pritchett to able to hold off that uh, Pervine there to be able to knock it out of bounds. So Campbellsville another opportunity here to take this lead. Kind of feels like both teams are kind of trying to a little prize fight here, trying to fill yeah. each other out and see how uh, things are going. Two, good two undefeated yeah, clubs, absolutely. number three, and a team that's receiving votes, trying to make a name for themselves uh, a bit here as Freed Hardin is climbing back into that national spotlight. Bouncing inside, Pedigo has Wilkes, throws it out. Pritchett won't shoot it. Dex it, drives, now kicks. This is Pedigo. Her three is off the mark. Long rebound taken by Bailey Pedigo. Campbellsville gets the short reset. Pritchett, three on the way. Bang! Courtney Pritchett and Edward Jones, three for the Lady Tigers. And there we go. That had to feel good for her to get that first shot, knock it down. I know it felt good for me I to see her. absolutely see that. Five to two. White being chased, able to knife her way inside, kicks it out. Satterley can't shoot, drives in, throws up a shot, and it's an offensive foul. Bailey Pedigo sets up camp, had the hot dogs and marshmallows roasting, and Satterley with a contact will pick up her first three on the Lions. Bailey Pedigo was there early. She was set up camp, as you said, and uh, did, did a great job of taking the charge there. 7.20 remaining here in the first quarter. Boyle holds it, waits, has Wilkes back to Boyle off the wing, won't shoot it. Inside, wide open, Pedigo hesitates, a little contact. I think if Bailey lets that go, she gets the foul call. Now, entry for Wilkes. Wilkes has to juggle it and catch it, kind of tapped it up to herself, back out, Pritchett won't shoot. Off the wing, five to shoot, Pedigo lets it ride. That is off the mark, and the rebound taken in by Baher for Freed Hardiman, and she'll bring it ahead. Yeah, good ball movement there by the Lady Tigers. Got a great look, just didn't fall. Sometimes that happens. Saturday and Baher go back and forth here. Saturday closed out on. She'll come to K.J. White off the wing. Ran into by Lee. Now a pass contested, stolen. This is Pritchett. Pritchett ahead. Campbellsville looking to add to their lead. Pritchett able to navigate away from some contact. Fouled by Satterley and one is Swiss doing it all. She grabbed it, brought it down the floor, hesitated, gets the bucket, and she'll go to the line. Yeah, that's actually a foul on White. On White, so not Satterley. White. They got White in there with a, coming over the top. But uh, great job by Courtney Pritchett. One on the defensive end, kind of get in the passing lane. The ball kind of falls in her lap, goes full court, was able to gather herself, go up strong, draw the foul chance here for the old-fashioned three-point play. Seven to two, and Pritchett makes it an eight to two ball game. Pritchett has six of the eight for Campbellsville. White the basketball for Freed Hardman. That foul was on her, her first four on the Lions here. Changes for both teams. Ball deflected and stolen. Pettigo throws it long ahead. Lee couldn't quite control it. It's still loose and it goes Nearly out of play. Ball still being battled for, and Lee picks it off as she took it away from Satterley, who was on her keister here. Bertram has gun, will shoot <laughs> off the mark. Elizabeth Bertram, the 5'6 sophomore guard from Glasgow, Kentucky, in the lineup for Campbellsville. Far side, Pervine looking for some help. That is Bender who's in the ball game. Now Barr open for three, and that is good for Madison Barr yeah. out of this near corner. Great rotation there by Freed Hardman to find that. 
Find her in the corner there. Good ball movement. Kayla Luby in for Campbellsville, 6'2 junior forward from B, Nebraska. Her parents are in attendance here this weekend. Nice to see them, talk to them before the game. Lee off the wing. Lee on the dribble into the corner. Pedigo, they want Luby, can't get it to her, at least not yet. Pedigo drives in. She has, uh, well, she had ideas on finding Pritchett, but it hit the net, Benji. That's a tough luck turnover on the Lady Tigers the other way. Satterley to Baher, she'll drive baseline, cut off, pitches it out, and Satterley with it once again. Satterley zips it left wing into the corner now, short corner, inside, running, uh, actually going to have an offensive foul there. Ball was knocked out of bounds. I believe it hit, I was shielded by the official right here. I believe it hit the legs of Bender, the 5'10 sophomore forward from Fairview, Tennessee. And uh, she spun, she ran into Pedigo. The worst part about that, I think she had already lost the basketball when the contact took yeah. place. Once again, great defensive position there by the Lady Tigers on that rotation to able to get there and get set up because this Freed Hardman team, as you can tell, they're penetrating and dishing, penetrating and dishing. And a lot of times when they do make that dish, you're there to be able to take the charge, and that's exactly what Bailey did. So, Kalia Fleming going to check in, 5'7 junior guard from Liberty, Indiana. Also in for Campbellsville, Sarah Sutton, 5'10", junior forward from Scottsville, Kentucky. Lee to Bertram, who circles, comes off the elbow, wants Luby. Wraps one down inside, Luby needs help. Pritchett to Bertram, nice feed inside. Luby goes up the left hand, won't go, stays with it, gets her own miss, gonna go back up. What do we got, a foul got or a foul. jump ball? Got a foul. Foul called inside on Freed Hardeman, and this was something that we talked about at the outset, is this is gonna be on Kelsey Bender. That's two quick ones on Bender here. But we talked about maybe Freed Hardeman's going to have a little difficulty contending with the Wilkes and Luby tandem. And uh, that time you could see Luby's size giving them all kinds of fits. Eight to five to score, 446 to play in this first quarter. We've got a media timeout. We'll step away. You're following the Lady Tigers on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. When I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men, take care of our home, build a foundation, you know what I'm saying? Love, our money, she's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world. Tigers return to the floor here with 446 to play in this first quarter. Matt Payton and Benji Kelly courtside. Donna Wise court the Powell Athletic Center here at Campbellsville University. As uh, we take a look at some of the replays here, this is that Pritchett bucket, the and one off the takeaway on the defensive end. Courtney Pritchett able to cash in the points there. Pritchett entering plate today. I believe it was still, uh, I think she was at 803 points entering plate today. So she continues to climb up. The scoring list, and she should reach a thousand this season, barring injury. The way Rachel Satterley's played for Freed Hardeman, she may reach a thousand as well. She has uh, been filling it up in her first few games as a Lion. Hopefully, we don't see much of that this evening. Luby at the line, free throw on the way. That is no good. Two shot foul. Bar came in eight. Nothing wrong with that, Madison Bar. You'd rather get a rebound when it doesn't count than uh, not get one when it does. Eight to five, Luby with one more. Free throw on the way, the southpaw shot good here, and she gets one of two, nine to five. Luby is uh, up over 90% on the season before that one. I think she had missed just one free throw as this ball's deflected and stolen. Lauren Lee comes out of there with it. Tries to avoid a couple of lines, stops, has Bertram at the free throw line. Bertram nearly lost the handle, throws up for a left-handed floater in the lane that's good. Uh, Elizabeth Burton at the right place would be able to get enough of spacing there from Lauren Lee to get a nice little jumper in the lane. Bertram has worked so hard on her conditioning and uh, really gotten herself in the best shape of her life this offseason. It is paying dividends for her as this pass is deflected. Going to the ground there is Luby, and I believe that's Chumley in there. Finally, we go to the uh, thumbs, and it'll stay with Freed Hardeman here. That's what I like about Kayla, her intensity on defense. Her hands and feet are always moving, and that's what she wants. She was able to get that deflection, which then caused the uh, to the uh, the jump ball. Not sure what the discussion is here. That's right. It's it's okay. So the scoreboard didn't the update. The, wrong, uh, yeah. It was showing Campbellsville. So yeah. It is Freed Hardeman basketball. Yeah, we had an early jump ball in that first possession. 
Jones here. Lee knocks the pass out of bounds there. Lauren Lee kind of jumped in front Great of defense. Uh, Chumley there. Yeah, kind of got, got around. Reed Hardeman lucky that wasn't a turnover. Actually, that, that, the shot clock should not have gone to 20. It should be, a, should be 11. So uh, they'll adjust the shot clock again. For Campbellsville to set the five, you've got Lee and Pritchett oh. out of the starting unit. You've got Bertram, Luby, and Sutton in off the bench. And still trying to get that shot clock squared away. They want it down to, what, 11, 10 or 11, Benji? I'm not sure what. No, it was 11. Yeah, it's 12. One, one, one second. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll try again here as Satterley looking. Still looking, throws one out deep. Lee, the help defender, nearly came across and grabbed that. Bertram with heavy defense on Fleming. Now on around, they get Satterley open in the corner. Three round and out, no good. Chumley can't handle the rebound. Luby corrals it, and the Lady Tigers sprint the other way. Bertram trying to avoid some defenders, and then her own teammate kind of runs into her. Bertram was going to navigate off right. Luby from her keister finds Sutton, who couldn't get the reverse. Oh, wow, that would have been a spectacular reverse layup there. And here we're going to have a foul called on Bertram as she closed out. Bertram kind of uh, didn't agree with the call. I don't but, think she did. But uh, she she's actually gotten away with a couple there uh, on the intensity uh, of her defense. She's kind of getting there before. Well, she's uh, being awfully aggressive. She's very, and which you want, which you absolutely want. I'd much rather be able to pull one, someone back as opposed to nudging them and, and getting them going. But uh, like you said, she came in this summer and worked hard on the off season, and you can tell it's paid huge dividends. At the free throw line, new player in the ball game, deflection by Bertram and nearly a takeaway. Satterley pitches it out. And on the dribble far side, Freed Hardeman has it knocked out of bounds as Fleming lost the handle briefly. Reese Berkey into the lineup. Berkey listed at 5'11". She looks a little taller than 5'11 to me. That's what I got off the website. Maybe a growth spurt after the roster was updated or something. <laughs> Berkey holds it. Bertram pressures. Oh, my. And we're going to have a hand check here on Bertram. Now, I'm not saying there wasn't contact, but I'm not sure that Bertram impeded progress at all, Benji. What's well, the, uh, it's, how's it's, the rule for It's Here's one of those things. It, it's it's six, six one fouls. So they, they're, they're not going to uh, let it get too much further out of hand. So as a result, they're able to, able to um, uh, kind of even it up 6-3. And uh, we'll go adjust the shot clock here Just once again. On the, on the shot. Maddie Nally checking in for the Lady Tigers. Nally, 6'2", sophomore forward from Louisville, Kentucky. Nally's in a bit of a pickle, Benji. I won't get into the details, but I saw her outside. She's looking for something she lost earlier. So, uh -oh. so boy, it's, it's been a real ordeal for her and Sarah Sutton. Here's a... Three on the way, no good. Rebound to Sutton, and she's good knocked rebound. to the ground. Rebound for Sutton will draw the foul against Ellie Chumley there. And they'll actually send Sutton to the free throw line. Our friend shooting Sutton. We've not seen much of her. She's averaging just nine minutes a game, and she's had a rough preseason. She's uh, she's still trying to get herself back to 100%. Yeah, she's, uh, she's had uh, some tough sledding here as of late. You name it. And uh, she's probably endured it. Yeah. She hits that first free throw. Sutton's... First trip to the line this season here tonight. Campbellsville leads at 12 to 5. If you're following along on 88 to 7, the Tiger. The Tigers now 13 to 5, the advantage. Freed Hardeman back the other way. KJ White working with the basketball into the corner. Has Berkey. Berkey skips it right wing. Open. Fleming three on the way. No good. I thought when she let that go, I thought she might bank that I in. Know. It was off them. It was off, but. I thought she might bank it in. And uh, here out top, Sutton, three on the way. That is off the mark to the right side. Wilkes the rebound. Pit Cat goes back up and draws the foul. Yeah, strong offensive rebound there by Caitlin Wilkes. You get her down low, she is going to be able to handle business. She got that rebound, went up strong. As a result, gets to go here for two free throws. So great job by, by uh by Wilkes. You and I have the same reaction. When a, when a Lady Tiger or a Tiger runs behind us in, during game, we know we, we got to turn around and figure out what's going on. That one was Luby, and I think maybe she has a cut or something. She may be getting Derek Port to doctor up as Wilkes misses that first free throw. Second free throw good for Caitlin Wilkes. Two minutes and 49 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Campbellsville leads by nine. Chumley the basketball. Now Satterley 
Has Chumley at the elbow. Out into the corner. Fleming back to Satterley. Satterley wants to drive in. Satterley playing with a white winkle picker and a black one there, Benji. I had noticed that prior. Well, to I just noticed it as well. I think she's got an ankle brace. Um, that looks like to be an ankle brace there on the right foot. So They get Wilkes right there on they that did. foul, I believe. So uh, Rusty Hollinsworth, if he's tuned in, he'll be thrilled with the usage of Winkle 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 there. Winkle, yeah. free throw by Fleming here off the mark. That's from a few years ago. It became a part of the lexicon, though, it once, once we used it the first time. It's fit. And uh, I think the, the guy ran out of his shoe. He did. He lost his Winkle picker. 14 to 6 the score. Two and a half minutes remaining. First quarter, Sutton on the wing, can't shoot it. Wanted the entry, and a nice job defensively by Freed Hardeman to knock it away. White the other end, her shot no good. Nice contest by Bailey Pedigo, and the Lady Tigers coming the other way off the miss. Long ahead, Nally drives in on the block, left side. May have been fouled, no call. Berkey there offering the defense, and Satterley the other way, just over two minutes to play in the period. Lauren Lee picks her up. Out top. White, two Lady Tigers hanging out. Pettigo knocked it away, but White able to stay with it. Now Fleming, three on the way. That is good for Kalia Fleming. Yeah, that good ball movement by Freed Hardman. When they're able to penetrate and kick it out to the open shooter, they're very, very effective. Lee to Nally. Now Sutton, 14 to nine the score. Pettigo inside, throws up a shot in the left hand off last good. She went right past Chumley, who's playing with two fouls, Benji. And well, and that's just smart. had to let her go. That's, that's smart play right there by Bailey Pettigo, no, reading the situation, knowing the defense got a couple fouls there. Satterley gets around Lee, driving in. Wilkes there to defend. Shot no good. Pettigo clears it. Campbellsville the other way. They lead by seven. Lee out. Sutton, extra pass, looking for Nally. Now Wilkes, ball deflected twice. Wilkes going to be called for an offensive foul. And that one there, Benji, is one that I hate the call because so often the bigger player gets yeah. penalized. Now, it's hard to tell exactly how much contact there was from here, but give, give Satterley credit. She had no, no chance down on the low block stopping it. No, well, and it's one of those things. They've already called two charges down here on this end. Uh, they're trying to even it out. And, you know, when a player goes down that hard, you're exactly right. They're, they're going to call that 99% of the time. Kayla Luby back in with that right wrist taped up. So that must have been the issue from earlier. Out to White. One minute even showing on the clock here. Here, Chumley out, ball stolen away. Here comes Maddie Nally to the offensive end. Nally gonna go up left hand. She is fouled by KJ White. And here, Benji, with 51 seconds showing on the clock, there's a theme for Freed Hardeman, and that is some of the foul issues. You've got well, there is. three players already with two fouls each, and uh, two of them out of your starting lineup. Yeah, and, and you, you're seeing they're being more aggressive, especially when the ball is down there, they're in post, they're double teaming. Uh, down and they're getting their hands in there and, and, and swiping at it. And a lot of times officials are going to call that. So um, now he's free throw off the mark. The Lady Tigers have left a few at the free throw line already tonight. Now five of eight. One more for Nally and that one is a round and out. No good. A little bit of an eye roll there from Nally. A little frustrated with herself. She was three of three on the season coming in. And this is a pair. Satterley needs some help as Fleming working right side into the corner, Pervine. Double team there, Pervine throws it off the left leg of Kayla Luby and out of bounds with 36 and a half seconds to play in the period. Now they're gonna check out Maddie Moyle back in for Campbellsville. Campbellsville with a seven point advantage. Lady Tigers number one in the country in field goal percentage, three point percentage entering play. They were number two in free throw percentage, which has dropped a bit here. Out, left corner, bar three on the way. That is no good short, and the rebound came right off to Satterley, and she knows what to do with it. Sticks it back up and in from eight feet. Yeah, that was a, that was a gift for Satterley because she was way, way out of there, and uh, as a result, the ball just bounced her way. But she did what uh, any good shooter does, put it right up and in. Shot clock is off. Lee working against Bauer here on that far side. 16 to 11. Campbellsville five-point lead, eight seconds. They look for points to close out the period. Pritchett in a bit of a double team. We're going to get three seconds on Kayla Luby and with 3.9 now. This is a, a big break for Freed Hardeman for Campbellsville. Worst case scenario, you're thinking you go in with a five point lead to the second quarter, but now Freed Hardeman a chance. Ooh, Maddie Boyle read that perfectly. Long ahead. Pervine, a deep three on the way. A Hail Mary almost. 
and it will be well short off the mark right. And that's where the first quarter will come to a close. The Lady Tigers will hold a five-point advantage as we head to quarter number two, 16 to 11, your score. You're following the Lady Tigers on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. The family's visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? You tell me to stand tall. You tell me to stay rooted. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? The kind to hug or the kind to climb? Doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. to 11 your score as we conclude period number one the lady tigers and freed hardeman combined to make just nine field goals in 28 attempts so benji that percentage hovering around uh, 31 32 percent yes. perhaps uh, kind of an ugly first quarter really and you use the uh, the phrase kind of feeling each other out i'm cracking up here chris Sh chris schroeder is here Old habits die hard. Oh, he's he, checking coach's water. I mean, he 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 knows his role. I, I'm telling he knows you, his role. the man after all these years out of the game still knows his role. He's down there filling up cups. At some point, we got to get Schroeder on camera. He made his way over from Ohio County. He was a part of those uh, one of those Epic uh, Fab runs. Four yeah, absolutely. runs. Absolutely. And uh, Schroeder, you still got it, buddy. You still got it. He said he's rusty. <laughs> he's he, like a rusty he, he, he old grading, male. Grading himself <laughs> tough here. Uh, said he's rusty, but uh, it's nice like to riding, see Chris. It's, it's like riding a bike. 16, a rusty bike. Yes. 16 to 11. Campbellsville leads by five. Lauren Lee left side to Boyle. Pettigo on the wing right side. Back to Lee. They want Luby. Can't get it to her. Boyle and Lee and Pettigo kind of working it around the horn. Skipping it is Lee. Ball knocked away, but Boyle able to save it. 10 to shoot. Lee drives in, kicks out. Pedigo back to Lee, short corner, driving baseline, spinning away. Five seconds, going to have to do something with it. She lowered the shoulder. So they're going to say Lauren Lee uh, lowered the shoulder a little bit there, and that'll be the first on Lauren Lee, first on the Lady Tigers. And back the other way, Free Hardeman will have a chance. Campbellsville, five turnovers in this one as Lauren Lee gets the left shoe out. And Kicks it right back into the direction of Fleming. 9.26 to play in the half. I am still, all these years later, not used to the uh, quarters. Yeah, it's, it's different. But I'll tell you games. one thing, it has sped the game up. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I'm a traditionalist, I guess. I guess. Same here. I like the National League with the pitchers hitting. Sue me. 16 to 11, left wing. Inside now, Satterley, who pitches it out. Bar, another three on the way. That's good. I believe her second of the night. Yeah, once again, that ball penetration uh, it kicks things open for the shooters. Reed Hardman's really good at that. Left wing boil, 16 to 14. It's as close as we've been in a while. Pritchett going to drive. Picks it out to Pettigo. And now shovels it back. Pritchett can't shoot it. Pettigo in the corner. Out top, Lee. Left side, Boyle decks it, drives in. A little floating shot for Matty Boyle is good. Good job, Matty Boyle there. He was able to read the defense and penetrate down on the baseline. That nice little mid-range jumper. I see her sister Molly making her way in on that far side on crutches. Oh, yeah, I see that. Well, looking for help here. Saturday got too far down inside and called for steps. And this Freed Hardeman team, Benji, is almost completely new from a season ago. The only player... Uh, available tonight from the way I can tell is uh, KJ White who played in that Mid-South Conference tournament game from a year ago. Kaylee Odom injured and, and will not play. Is Luby going to go to work down inside? Shot with the left hand, no good. And nice defense there by Chumley with those two fouls. So they're trying to figure things out. They didn't see much of Twilight a year ago as no. Campbellsville didn't play it much. But in this game, it really doesn't matter as uh, the entire team is, is new anyhow, pretty much. Off the elbow is Pervine. She's got open shooter. That's Satterley left side three in and out. No good. And the rebound taken in here by Campbellsville. Lauren Lee to the front court. Long ahead looking for Boyle Skies to catch it. She's whacked and fouled by Pervine. And now Pervine joins a couple of her teammates with two fouls. Good heads up play there in transition. Able to find Maddie Boyle cutting to the basket. So a chance for her to go to the free throw line. 
here early. 18 to 14 the score. Boyle at the nail for Campbellsville University. The two teams still around that uh, mid-30 or so free throw shooting. And it, it's one of those things that they're not uh, field goal shooting. Yeah, they're not getting bad looks. It's just the defense is really good. They're contesting every shot. And sometimes that's just hard to overcome. Boyle gets one of two. It's a five-point Campbellsville advantage as Coach Epperson calls out the offensive set here for Freed Hardman. Lauren Lee gives chase to Fleming. And now driving is Berkey, who needs some help here. And Berkey throws it away. Pritchett there to intercept. Long ahead, she's got Boyle, who's going to have to chase it down. And Satterley may have done Campbellsville a favor there, yeah, Benji. She they really were did. a bit out of sorts, and they would have had Boyle in uh, trapped uh, down a there big in the time corner. Trap. Yeah. And the ball got poked out of bounds by Satterley. Easy for me to say from here. Satterley just to the hustle play. As Lee pitches it in. And Luby, before I could even call her name, was fouled. The whistle had sounded there as they found Luby Fleming going to be called for the contact here. Good, good out of bounds play by the Lady Tigers for Luby to get that wide open opposite block. Good heads up play there by Lauren, Lauren Lee to, to see her because Pedigo was actually open here on the wing. Luby's shot in the left hand is good. Luby got to go home to Nebraska for the holiday, and her parents drove in and catch a few games this weekend. And the official may have caught, I assume, earlier with blood. blood. It yeah. may be on her, her uniform. That may have been the discussion as the second free throw on the way is good. If you're not familiar with Kayla Luby's story, the Lady Tigers played against Luby in Hawaii last year. Kind of a long commute to, to play, yeah. <laughs> play against uh, a team, but Campbellsville gets the takeaway. Lauren Lee to the front court, right hand stops. Hesitation, the shot no good. Two players run into each other as Satterley and I believe that's Bender come together. Long ahead, they've got Berkey. Berkey will go up the right hand too strong. Lauren Lee, another rebound, and she is fouled here by Baher. And that's going to be two on Baher. Let's just give two to everybody. Uh, here. That's about where we're headed, my friend. But uh, that Luby story, and I'm sure we'll talk about this a few times. They play against uh, Concordia in Hawaii, and then Concordia was at the same regional site in the NAI Bowling Open Green. Round Tournament in Bowling Green. They lost to Benedictine. Campbellsville would beat Benedictine in that final contest to move on to Sioux City. But uh, at some point after the season, Luby kind of reached out and uh, told Campbellsville, took Ginger High Call, and have a little interest. And, the next thing you know, she's a Lady Tiger. Pretty neat story is the entry here. And Lee going to pitch it out to Pritchett. Three for Boyle is short. And Satterley able to keep it in play. Freed Hardman back to the offensive end. Six and a half minutes to play in the half. 21 to 14. Campbellsville leads it by seven. Berkey open right wing. Triple is no good. And the rebound chased down by Boyle. She'll pitch it ahead to Pedigo. And long left wing, they have Pritchett back to Boyle. Pedigo again, shovels it to Lee. And they look for Luby, not there. Now Pritchett, wide open inside. Luby, left hand off glass, good. She gets the deuce, Swiss the dime. Yeah, nice entry pass there by Courtney. And once again, Luby, she found that defender, sealed him perfectly, and got a nice little easy layup. It was uh, 16 to 14, Benji, at one stage was. here. Campbellsville has scored seven straight. On the wing, White going to drive in, gets around a pair of Lady Tigers, and pitches one up and in off glass. And we've got a stoppage here. I believe Ginger High Colvin may have taken uh, the timeout. Coach Epperson did. Coach Epperson yeah. took a timeout. So it's a 30-second timeout, but it'll become a media stoppage. So we will step away. Campbellsville leads at 23-16, to 16, 543 to play in the half. You're following the Lady Tigers on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. If you love them enough to relearn math so you can teach them math, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. Five minutes and 43 seconds remaining here in the first half. Matt Payton and Benji Kelly with you at the Powell Athletic Center as the Lady Tigers 
playing their home opener tonight. Five games to begin the season all on the road as we take a look at replays. Those of you following along on our uh, coverage, video coverage, whether that's local cable or uh, YouTube, sidearm, whatever it may be for the athletics website. Thank you for tuning in tonight, joining us on radio. But that, that pass there, Courtney Pritchett, uh, Benji able to set up offense. And she did that so well last year, talking about Ashley McGeorge at the outset of the broadcast. McGeorge able to get so much done, thanks in large part to uh, Courtney Pritchett. She is one of those players that uh, she just makes everybody around her better. Well, she it, it, she's so smart that she knows how to read the defense. She knows what kind of entry pass needs to be made. And if she has to take a one dribble to the right or left to be able to improve that passing lane, she does. And she can shoot the ball. So she's just a dynamic player. And it's good to see her having a great night tonight, especially what she's gone through here this last week. 23-16, Pedigo out top, right wing, Sutton. Thought about it, wouldn't let it go. Now Pritchett, nope, it's gonna be Lee straight away. Back to Sutton. Sutton survey, skips it. Short corner left side, ball knocked away from Pedigo by Pervine, and Fleming here is going to be knocked to the ground and fouled by Pedigo. And it may have been a little frustration foul there on Pedigo, getting the ball stole, stole from her. And uh, 519 shows on the clock, Campbellsville back in the defensive end here after that Pedigo foul, two on the Lady Tigers as a club. KJ White has it deflected, but Satterley Catches it, gonna dribble in. Just off the free throw line, deep shot there is no good for Bender. Kayla Luby the rebound, Campbellsville the other way. Lee will slow it down a bit, leave it. Trailer, Pritchett, ball fake, out. Lee wide open, she'll deck it as well. Now you've got Pedigo, right wing, triple, around and out, no good. Sutton with the rebound. And we're gonna have a foul called on, on Sarah Sutton. Sutton. Yeah. Sarah, a little, little body there on the rebound. I love the, the effort and the, the willingness to, to go after it, but she just kind of made a little contact there, and officials call that. Pass ahead to Satterley, back to KJ White. White dribbling, left side of the lane, pitches it back out. Now Satterley, straight away, three on the way. That is hard, and the rebound gonna be tied up. Bender and Luby come together, and the arrow will stay with Freed Hardeman here. The Lions, 10 turnovers already, averaging just 13 of all game coming into play here this evening. So Campbellsville has been able to speed them up, Benji, and get them out of rhythm uh, at times. As Satterley pitches it out deep here to Bender. Now White, left side. Entry pass to Purvine, back out. And again, White gonna drive, gets the step and gets the lay in with the left hand and a foul gonna go against Campbellsville. I believe Kayla Luby a bit tardy getting over will be hit with the contact. It is, and Kayla Luby picks up her first of the ball game. Four on the Lady Tigers as a team. 4-24 remaining in the half. We had a couple people that got out of position there. Luby was a little bit out of position, and then Pedigo actually got her feet tangled. She fell down. Fell down, and as a result, that was created the, the, the dribble lane there for Freed Harden. KJ White misses the free throw, so Campbellsville will hold on to this five-point lead for the time being. Low-scoring affair thus far. Neither team has gotten much done offensively. Pritchett holds it. She scored six of the first eight. Scoreless since Sutton three. Bang! Sarah Sutton and Edward Jones three for the Lady Tigers. Yep. Yep. She can shoot. We've all seen that. Has gone. Will shoot. Yeah, she and her from subscribe to the same philosophy. I think you had that philosophy too. I you had couldn't that score if you couldn't if you didn't shoot. Right. That's exactly right. Here is uh, Fleming driving, and boy, the the lane just opened up for Fleming and a little strong with that shot. Ball gets knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Freed Hardeman. Campbellsville will have it. Yeah, you're not second on the all-time scoring list by, by boxing out and playing hard defense, right? <laughs> As Coach said, I didn't play much decent defense, but that was okay. 26 to 18, an eight-point Lady Tiger lead. Pritchett out to Luby. On the wing, it's Lee looking. Now setting on the wing left side. Wants the Luby ball knocked away by Purvine. She's been a bit of a pest here in this first half. Right wing, Pedigo, five to shoot. Pedigo bounces and Luby couldn't handle it clean. I believe uh, Bender may have gotten a little piece of that on the way through. And Purvine the other way, leaves it out to Satterley. Wide open three on the way for Satterley. That is hard and the Lady Tigers continue to avoid uh, Satterley getting going here. She struggled, Sutton three on the way. That's gonna be off of the right. 
And the rebound taken in by Satterley, who falls down. Luby knocked the pass free. Pedigo goes to the ground. Goodness gracious, like roller derby out here. Out wide, right side. Three on the way from Fleming, no good. Here comes Gee, Lee Bruce. to the other end. Lee tries to split two defenders, and it was actually the defender getting back, Bender, that knocked that out of play. I believe half of the players on the floor just about were on the court. They, in the they, last they were they are literally laying on the floor. Uh, just to... Now they're going to check in. Luby checks out. As Campbellsville will inbound. Lauren Lee looking as Pritchett right side shot blocked by Bender. Nice job helping by Kelsey Bender. I think Pritchett thought she had all kinds of room, and she did. Bender closed out Bender's, quickly. Bender's quick, and she's got a long reach, and I think that surprised Courtney there how, how fast she got to her and was able to defend that shot. White finds a cutting Pervine at the elbow, pitches it out. Fleming grabs it. Now Satterley working right side. Here comes White driving in. Back out. Again, it's Fleming. And Satterley now with 11 to shoot. Bounces. Pervine at the free throw line. Pass deflected by Pritchett. And she grabs it. Campbellsville the other way. Pritchett, far side. Looking. Left side. Sutton. Back out top. Lee. Sutton, short corner. Nally. Entry. Back. Little give and go. Nally nice. lays it up and in. Off glass. She gets the hoop. Courtney Pritchett, another helper. Nice play there. Pritchett and Nally, little give and go. A little old school but basketball. Good stuff. 28 18. Double figures the lead. I believe that's the largest it lead is. of the day for Campbellsville. White pressure. Left side. Satterley needs some help. Has Bender on out. Fleming, a contested three. Long. Sutton grabs the air ball. Leaves it with Pedigo. She wants to run. Shovel it back to Lee. Straight away. Three on the way. Bang! Lauren Lee. Another Edward Jones triple for the Lady Tigers. And there's a point guard knowing when to take the shot at the appropriate time. It, Lauren Lee has matured so much as a player over the last couple of years. Malley cuts off Satterley. Going to take the floater off the baseline. Whoa. That is good. And that may be the one that gets Satterley going. You just never know. Campbellsville will sprint the other direction. Just over a minute to play. Left side, Sutton, three on the way. Bop, 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 bang! Sarah Sutton, another Edward Jones three for the Lady Tigers. Let's go, get a stop here. Sutton in rhythm. Look at Courtney Pritchard rallying her team around her. 14-point margin, just under 45 seconds to play in the half. White to Bender into the corner. Pervine, three on the way. Wow. These two teams struggled they struggled the from last the get-go, but they're picking it up there. now. Wow, what a shooting contest here. Campbell's with a chance to almost get the last shot. Shot clock and game clock separated by about three seconds, maybe four seconds, depending on which eye you close and look. <laughs> 11 point margin, Campbellsville gonna dribble this thing out top, Lauren Lee between the circles. Gonna attack now with nine seconds. Sutton holds it, they want Pritchett, now they've got her. Pritchett to Lee, three seconds, back door, gonna have to throw it up. Lee throws it up, gets the bucket, but they'll wave it off as the shot clock expired. Needed one more tick. Yep, waited just a half second uh, to start that play. 34-23, to play in the half. They're actually going to change it to 4.8. The official just came in. and well, now so. I don't think there was five seconds differential between the shot clock and game clock. That's basically what they, well, not 48. 40.8, they're going to send Bree Gowdy into the lineup. This uh, Bree quicker than the proverbial hiccup. Going to check in for Sarah Sutton. So Freed Hardeman had a chance late in the first quarter to get a... Uh, buzzer beating shot they'll try it again here in the second Satterley looking for some help spins two seconds he's gonna have to heave one up Good not defense. a chance as Campbellsville able to stay close into the hip pocket of Satterley and once Satterley got kind of into that almost yeah. double team yeah, and dribbled back yeah. they were toast they were toast and, and, and it was um, a great job by Bree Gowdy there coming in and making her turn because that takes another second second and a half off the clock so 34 23 and 11 point lead for the Lady Tigers as they head to the locker room. We will uh, step away, take a two minute timeout, come back and look at the numbers that made up the first half. You're following the Lady Tigers on the Campbellsville University Sports Network.
Jason, let's go see your room. What if you could feel in control of your retirement in just a few clicks? At aceyourretirement.org, you can. Start with a free three-minute chat with Avo, your friendly digital retirement coach. Just answer some simple questions like, how do you feel about your ability to save for retirement? Or in how many years do you want to retire? To get free action items customized just for you, get your retirement back on track at aceyourretirement.org. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. Time here at the Powell Athletic Center, Matt Payton, Benji Kelly, the Lady Tigers, an 11 point lead as uh, Freed Hardeman trails 34 to 23. Benji, we take a look at some of the numbers that made up that first 20 minutes. Campbellsville got rolling a bit offensively in quarter number two, shot it much better 50% in the second quarter, six of 12, 40%. Overall, Freed Hardeman never really got rolling, 32%, but the big number for the Lions, just four of 18 from deep. Uh, so that three ball was not falling for them. And uh, it really, one or two of those, and, and the game looks a little different. It's, it's totally different. And, and one of the reasons why they, they got some looks, but Campbellsville was contesting those looks. The ones that they were able to knock down, they were wide open. So it's totally different. Uh, you know, vibe there, uh, especially on the defensive end for the Lady Tigers. They've done a really good job of blocking out, uh, presenting uh, those second chance opportunities. But as you mentioned, Campbellsville kind of got rolling there in the second quarter. And one of the reasons why they were able to do that, Matt, is a little bit of transition. Uh, Freed Harden was getting back, but those open shooters were open. You saw Sutton, you saw Lauren Lee hit one. Uh, you saw uh, Courtney Pritchett actually hit one. So uh, Campbellsville was able to knock down uh, what's uh, four three pointers uh, that they're there in the second quarter, three in the second quarter, and it's just uh, some good execution. Taking a look at uh, some of these numbers here, the Lady Tigers finished 40.7% from the floor. As I mentioned, they were four of 11 from deep with four Edward Jones payouts. So that's 36.4%, 61% at the free throw line. That may be the number that uh, yeah. Ginger High Colvin really barks at at halftime as uh, they've been a terrific free throw shooting team thus far in that first half, uh, just not the results that we've been accustomed to. This season for Freed Hardimage is 32% from the field in the first half. They were 22% from deep. And uh, the Lions just one of three at the free throw line there in the first frame. Campbellsville led in scoring with eight points from Sarah Sutton. Sutton off the bench, two made three-point field goals. She had three rebounds in the first half. They got six from Courtney Pritchett, six early points, a couple of rebounds, a couple of assists, three steals for Swiss in the first period. Kayla Luby had five points, four boards, five more for Maddie Boyle in the first half. Campbellsville gets three from Lauren Lee to go with four assists and two steals, two each for Bailey Pedigo, Maddie Nally, and Elizabeth Bertram, one from Caitlin Wilkes, and that's, uh, you know, for Campbellsville, Wilkes got those 2,000, had to sit. That's kind of an X factor, a bit of a wild card moving in to the second half with Wilkes uh, kind of struggling there in the first frame, just in large part thanks to the foul troubles. 
Yeah, but, but Campbellsville has, has able to adjust on that. You know, actually, Luby came in and played some really, really solid minutes. You saw Maddie Nolly uh, come in there as well and was able to contribute. But one thing that I'm impressed about this Lady Tiger team is they have already turned Freed Hardman yeah. over 11 times, and they only turned the ball over 12 times at night. So great, great effort there in the first half. I think that's one of the reasons why Freed Hardman has just not gotten in sync on the offensive end is because they've been turning the ball over uh, because of Campbellsville pressure. For Freed Hardeman in the uh, first half, they were led in scoring by Madison Barr with six points. They got four each from Kayla Fleming, KJ White, and Rachel Satterley. Three from Reagan Purvine and two from Ellie Chumley. That rounds out the scoring for the Lions, who also in a bit of uh, a pickle with fouls and the uh, foul situation there. They've got five players with two fouls each. Uh, for uh, Campbellsville, they finished 17 rebounds in the first half, three of them on the offensive end. Freed Hardeman, 13 rebounds, just one on the offensive end. 10 assists, seven steals, eight turnovers for the Lady Tigers. For Freed Hardeman, seven assists, four steals, 11 turnovers, as Benji alluded to. And you've got the uh, the old calling card of this Campbellsville University Club has been that, that extended yes. zone. It's turned Freed Hardeman over, and it's resulted in points off turnovers. It's an 11-point ball game. Campbellsville with a nine-point advantage in points off turnovers, 12 to three. So Freed Hardeman hasn't really been exposed to this defense. You've got some teams around the league like a Thomas Moore, a veteran team with Courtney Hurst and Zoe Barth. They've seen it. They've done it. They've been around it. Right. It's tough to adjust. We'll see how the second half plays out for Freed Hardeman. Well, and and you know that they'll make they'll make a few tweaks, but Campbellsville also will make a few tweaks on the defensive end as well. So. Uh, you know, it's all about adjustments when you come out in the second half. This first five minutes is always critical. You don't want this Freed Hardman team to get in there and cut it back to, you know, a five or six point ball game. Let's go ahead and, and put the throttle down and extend this thing from 11, get it up to a 15 and 16. The next thing you know, frustration sets in and then you've got them where you want them. So uh, we get, thankfully we get the ball here to start the second half. I would not be surprised if we go straight down low to Caitlin Wilkes. Campbellsville points in the paint, 10 to eight, the advantage. We talked about off turnovers, 12-3 for the Lady Tigers. Second chance points, 5-2 in favor of CU. And then uh, bench points, 17 to four, another big one yes. for the Lady Tigers. They've gotten uh, quite the play from their bench tonight, uh, mainly Sutton and Luby. Uh, no lead changes, one tie in the ball game. Campbellsville's largest advantage, 14 points coming uh, in the last minute or so of the first half. We'll step away here, an extended timeout, come back and get you ready with second half action in a moment. At halftime, the Lady Tigers lead Freed Hardeman 34 to 23. You're following Lady Tiger basketball on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. When I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm gonna take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men, take care of our home, build a foundation, you know what I'm saying? Love our money, she's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world. Hey Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Thank you. Worried about your friend but don't know how to reach out? You could say how are you or get a fake tattoo. You could ask with an app if it works for you. You could chat with them in VR. It's all good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. 
What if you could feel in control of your retirement in just a few clicks? At aceyourretirement.org, you can. Start with a free three-minute chat with Avo, your friendly digital retirement coach. Just answer some simple questions like, how do you feel about your ability to save for retirement? Or in how many years do you want to retire? To get free action items customized just for you, get your retirement back on track at aceyourretirement.org. When you look at the number of disasters in the U.S., chances are every area will deal with some kind of emergency in the next decade. And between school, sports, and social lives, chances are you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. The family's visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? You tell me to stand tall. You tell me to stay rooted. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? The kind to hug or the kind to climb? Doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. It's a dad. Every day is a challenge. To make sure that the time that I have, I spend with them. It doesn't matter how tired you are. You have to try and to teach them. When they learn something new, and you can just see in their faces, it's, it's such an incredible moment. It's those moments that are, that are my favorite. If you love them enough to relearn math so you can teach them math, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. Jason, let's go see your room. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. Halftime period winding down here in the Powell Athletic Center. The Tigers coming up at Peyton Benji Kelly here courtside. We've got game two of this Mid-South Conference doubleheader. A couple of six-win clubs in action this, uh, this evening. Tigers 6-3, and three. Freed Hardeman 6-2. and two. That's going to be a fun one as uh, each of those clubs looking for win number seven. Lady Tigers try to close out. This game here. Oh, mercy. I looked at that Thomas Moore, Tennessee Southern game. I didn't expect that. 62-22. And I don't, wow, I don't care how much time left in the game. Wow. 
uh, some other scores around the league. I know Benji, you were kind of following some of them. Uh, a couple of close games. Cumberland Wilberforce, a five-point game. Georgetown Shawnee, a six-point game. Got uh, Pikeville and Cumberland. Cumberland's a close one. Eight, so. eight, no, they just started the second half there. Pikeville up eight on Cumberland. So Lindsay Wilson and Bethel just getting underway. That is going to be a dogfight there. Yes, Both of those teams be. desperate for a, a victory. That's mid third quarter, 65 to 22. Thomas Moore leading UT Southern. Campbellsville with the basketball to begin things here. Pedigo forced out front. Campbellsville is thriving. Starting lineups out there. Lee backs away. Lee has it, 10 to shoot. Pressure, now Boyle on the wing. Back to Lee, seven to shoot. Crossover the free throw line, and we're gonna have a foul called here against Freed Hardeman. This will go against Chumley. 24, and poor Miss Chumley has been in foul trouble all evening. 34-23, first on the, uh, the Lions here. Pedigo on the dribble. Wanted Wilkes, not there. Now Pritchett going to try it, can't. Lee open, won't shoot it. Left side, Boyle. Boyle to Lee, back to Boyle in the wing. And a skip pass, right side. Pedigo, back to Boyle. Three on the way for Maddie Boyle. Bang, and Edward Jones three with two on the shot clock. Maddie Boyle beats the buzzer, and the Lady Tigers extend to a 15-point advantage. Yeah, it's a good uh, execution there by the Lady Tigers. 14-point advantage, Matt is hard. Boyle nearly a takeaway, and Pedigo going to lock up K.J. White. The arrow will stay with Freed Hardeman. 8.59 to play in the third quarter. The fifth Edward Jones three of the ball game a moment ago from Matty Boyle. KJ White rolls in, leaves it out. This is Satterley. Satterley needs help. She'll go down the baseline to Purvine. Ball deflected by Boyle, and it'll go out of bounds in the backcourt. Good hands there by Matty Boyle. Uh, five five on the shot clock here, Benji. Yeah, for five seconds. So uh, I, I see a little pressure here on the inbounds by, by the Lady Tigers here to kind of disrupt them like they did there at the end of the first half. Satterley, the trigger woman, looking, still looking. Finally, White cuts. Nice shot by Satterley. White carry. inside, and she's yeah, going to be called call. for a carry there with two on the shot clock. They had to go quickly, and Satterley was forced to uh, to race ahead. I think when she got in front of Pritchett there, just put her hand under it and carried it through. Would have extended my basketball career had that been legal. <laughs> I may have made it to middle school. 37-23, right wing. Pritchett inside, has Wilkes back out. Pritchett bluffs the shot, now Boyle on around. Lee straight away. Pedigo left side, now Pritchett. Lee at the elbow, out, shooter. Boyle, triple on the way, in and out. Rebound, Lee gonna go right back up. Shot off, that's good for Lauren Lee. Bonus points when your point guard can get the offensive rebound and put it back up and in. 16 point margin here, the Lady Tigers extending. Barr with the basketball inside, looking for Chumley into the corner. Open as Pervine, her three is short. Ball her right there for the rebound. Satterley, I thought, would let that go. Instead, dribbles in. Nice little floater there. Soft touch for Rachel Satterley. Yeah, smart play there by Satterley. And here we've got an issue with the shot, shot clock, clock again. Did reset. Yep. 27 on the shot clock should be. Well, we've got a moment. Benji Kelly wanted me to tell all you Buffalo Bills fans oh, to yes. text him and let him know the Absolutely. score this evening. <laughs> I think he's going to play keep away. That's it's right. so hard to try to avoid. They got. I told. We talked about this as you can see the replay here as Bailey Pettigo skips it left side to Boyle for that three for those following along on video. But they got you this week, and I'm pretty I sure know. me next week. Uh, of course, my team's not really worth watching most Sundays oh, yeah, or Thursdays. Great win Sunday, though. And, uh, Jacobs went off. It, well, it was here as Lee is pressured. We'll... Uh, We'll talk about that a bit more in a moment. Next media timeout or something, we'll just keep it here. Is this ball deflected? Bauer, can she save it? She cannot. Campbellsville will have to pitch it in. I tell you, I've been impressed with Bauer here on a defensive end, just how she is constantly moving and the hands moving and was able to reach in, time those dribbles and uh, disrupt the Lady Tigers. Right side, Pedigo into the corner. Boyle wants Wilkes. They've done a nice job taking away Wilkes in that entry pass. Pritchett, four to shoot, Lee, corner, Boyle again, three on the way, bang, Maddie Boyle! 
ball. That's a buzzer beater right there. The shot clock sounding as the ball was in the air. Hits another Edward Jones three, a high arching three as Pedigo kind of gets the body of Satterley and knocks her to the deck. There's a linebacker right there coming through. Look like Bailey Pedigo. She's like, I'm just going to knock you knock over. her down. We'll see if they'll call it or but not. What, what about Maddie Boyle, the game she's having here tonight? She has hit some big shots throughout big her shots. career and a couple here this evening. A.J. White, the basketball, left side. Bar with it. Now top, White again. Surveys, nowhere to go. Now I'm going to dump it into Chumley. Out to Satterley. Pressured a bit. Needs some help. Down in the end line. This is Chumley. Nice drive across the lane. And we've got a whistle here. They're going to call Caitlin Wilkes again for a foul. Wilkes, not sure about it. It'll be two on the Lady Tigers. As that's going to be three now. That may have on been on Caitlin Pettico. Wilkes. Let's see. Uh, Here's the boil. You can see that high arching shot to get it over top of the defender. That was Satterley. Wilkes going to check out. She's got the three fouls now. Pedigo out, has two. Bertram back in for Campbellsville with two fouls. Kayla Luby re-enters for CU as Chumley at the line here for two shots. First shot, no good. One more coming. 17-point margin. Campbellsville 42 to 25, the advantage. Second free throw for Chumley on the way. That one is no good, so she misses both. Campbellsville back to the front court. Lauren Lee working right side. They're looking for Bertram. They hand it off. Bertram off the screen from Luby now. Driving left side of the lane, kicks it out. Boyle, now Pritchett. Lee again, they want Luby. There's the entry. Luby out to Pritchett. Picks up her dribble. Now Boyle driving in. She's bumped and fouled. This will go against, I believe, Baher. Baher's uh, pretty diligent with her fouls. She's grabbed one in every quarter. <laughs> That's over, consistency right there. Not overdone it at all. Just at that rate, she'll survive the full 40 minutes. Short corner, Boyle. Now Bertram. Nice defense by Freed Hardeman here. They've made it difficult. Inside Bertram, just in the room. She gets it inside to Kayla Luby for the finish. Elizabeth Bertram, the five. Yeah, it's a nice seal by Kayla Luby there to... Uh, Get in the right position, the right entry pass. Nice, easy layup. On inside, wide open, Pervine. The Lady Tigers, I lost Pervine as I well. The too. official was standing right here. Pervine was hidden from me when the ball went that direction. I was getting ready to say that it was thrown away, and here flashed Pervine out of nowhere to grab it and pitch it in. Well, that's a heads-up play by Freed Hardman to be able to see her. Bertram holds it. Out top, Luby spills to the deck. And now Pritchett holds it, backs away, now dribbles in, shovels it back, wide open, Lee, three. That one's going to be short. Luby grabs the rebound, kind of, the rebound almost grabbed her. Here is Lee driving, lost the handle, stays with it. Free throw line, back out, Pritchett, long two, no hmm. good. Luby, another rebound, goes for the stick back. She's fouled by Chumley. Yeah, you're not going to outwork her. She. Nope, they're going to put this one on Saturday, actually. Kayla Luby fighting for that offensive rebound position. Chance here to go to the free throw line. Love her intensity, Matt. This was a great transfer for the Lady Tiger program. She was able to actually come in this summer and stayed here and worked with uh, Bertram and Wilkes. And um, I believe N uh, Nally was here as well. Uh, so good to see the, those hard work paying off. Maybe the most, that may be the most impressive thing about Luby getting here throughout yeah, the summer. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Lear that it's not easy to be that it's far not. away from home. I've never really done it to this to that degree, so I can't speak from experience. But you're moving 12 hours away and over the summer with not a lot of classwork and different things um, going. I may be wrong, but I think Luby, Kayla may have had a job if she misses that free throw. She may have like worked from home over the summer, like while here. She had a job where she could work from the dorm or whatever. Uh, I, I could be wrong on that, but that, that helps uh, bridge the gap a little bit. She hits the second free throw, 18 point advantage. White to Satterley, who's Chase. Picks up her dribble, needs some help. Left side, Pervine. Back to Satterley. We close in on the midway mark of this third quarter. Driving in. Satterley will float her. No good. Maddie Nally, who checked back in a moment ago, has the rebound. Here comes Lee with it. Lee into the corner. Bertram. Wanted Luby, not there. Bertram cut off. Needs some help. Bounces it. Knocked away. Bertram gets it back. Bounces again. Luby goes to work off glass. No good. Bertram again. Going to go back up off glass with the left hand. And Elizabeth Bertram is fouled here. And she'll go to the free throw line. Campbellsville doing some major work down inside. Satterley now with three. 
Benji, what do you say about that? It's just hustle. Well, it's just hustle. It's it's tenacity. It's effort. Um, constantly, when the shot's taken up, you, you crash the boards. And, uh, you know, you, you don't teach that. It's a kind of instinct. You've got to learn to do that. And uh, Lisa Burton was there the time before. It was Luby. So just great effort. Media great time effort. out here. We'll keep it here. 45-27 the score. Tigers and Lions coming up here in just – a bit Campbellsville University hosting this Mid-South Conference doubleheader. They've got the uh, Bethel Wildcats on Saturday. That'll be a one Eastern start for the Lady Tigers. Tigers follow at three. And your thoughts on these games? The game time's moving up. Uh, it's kind of it makes the work day on Thursday really interesting. Kind of speeds everything it up. Speeds it feels everything like up. you know an hour you yeah. lost uh, trying to get here, even though it's 30 minutes. And then Saturday, I, I just soon play those at noon. But yeah. um, you know we'll take one we'll o'clock. One o'clock is better. Um, you know it's uh, it, you're going to lose the day anyway. But uh, I understand why they do it to kind of uh, one uh, not, not keep the teams out as late, uh, especially when they're traveling. Uh, far, far distances that gives them that extra 30 minutes on a Thursday to get to the next location. And then on Saturday, it gives them an extra hour earlier to, to get home. Because if you're a Tennessee school going all the way up to Ohio, that is a long, long haul. Worry about that time change as well. Different, yes. Uh, come at, like when we go to Freed Hardeman on a Saturday, that return meeting between these two clubs will be on the 14th of January. That's a, a you know, for the guys, a four o'clock Eastern tip off. So you're not out of there till six, six, so yeah. five hour trip, no matter how you cut it. Right. And uh, Bertram here misses that free throw, but uh, makes for a long, long night. Campbellsville struggling, or actually both teams struggling from the free throw line here tonight. Bertram gets the second. 46-27, almost a 20 point lead for the Lady Tigers. Saturday. Ahead with the basketball, cut off there by Bertram. Needs some help as she's picked up her dribble. And back out. Now Satterley, and this ball knocked out of bounds. Well, that was the point of emphasis that Coach Colvin had is, is basically disrupt Satterley, speed her up. And as you can see there in the first half, Satterley had four turnovers. Uh, so Campbellsville doing a good job of, of making her feel uncomfortable. I think we lost camera two briefly. We've got it back now. Pitch it out, left side. Rolling in the shot there is Satterley. Luby the rebound as she missed it, a little short. Sutton back in for Campbellsville. Lauren Lee, the only member of that thriving starting lineup to, I think that button is sticking on the shot clock I think so here. Too. Trying to work on it, tighten the cord. And, uh, and Lauren Lee, the only member of the starting lineup Thrivent Financial presenting that starting lineup. Quentin Ford, thank you to Quentin for his support of Tiger Athletics as Lee with the basketball. Lady Tiger circling and now Bertram left wing rips through quickly, but gonna leave it right back out with Lee. Sutton holds it on the right side. Fleming defends, now Lee, excuse me, that is uh, Bertram actually, inside, Nally finds Luby, out, Lee, three on the way. That is short in the rebound is corralled inside by Bender. She'll come the other way, left side Fleming. Cut off there by Nally, and we've got... Shot clock again. Oh boy. And I'm afraid we've got a malfunction. This is not an individual... It's not an individual problem. I think we may have a piece of equipment there that's going haywire. Uh, while we've got a moment, Benjamin, we talked a little bit about a little filler. We talked about the Thursday night football and uh, the, the Bills tonight. And uh, I'll just wish my childhood hero a happy birthday. yesterday, Bo Jackson's Bo birthday. Bo Jackson. November 30th. And uh, while I play. love Bo, it's his fault I'm a Raiders fan, if, we, uh, <laughs> if I could say that. It's, it's been a... It's been a difficult uh, life to live there. Well, you know, the Bills had a, as a difficult life to, to live as well. Uh, 17 years of yeah. a playoff. Now we got our quarterback uh, that uh, we had that everyone, I think, wishes they had. So it's been I know, exciting. I, I, don't, I, don't, I like Derek Carr, but Josh Allen. That's yeah, he's a, he's a whole other level. But uh, anyhow, but we're here tonight. We got Lady Tiger Tiger. Uh, I won't be checking my phone. Stay, stay with it. Wait till the end. Here, Fleming going to throw up a floater and have a late whistle there. I'm not sure Luby moves. She turned the box out, Fleming, and, and ended up picking up the foul call. This, uh, hopefully our shot clock issues are remedy. Fleming second. It's going to be three on the Lady Tigers as a team.
Fleming at the line. Free throw here is around and out. No good. Wow. I'm telling you, these two teams at the free throw line. Freed is one of six tonight. Make that two of seven. It must feel like they're shooting on one of those uh, rim reducers yeah. where the, the rim is smaller. Lee leaves it with Bertram. Bertram will cross over, get some separation, needs some help. Force feeds one inside, and that ball's knocked away. <laughs> Richard Robards did, did the shot clock last year for a game, and he, he sent me a text. He said, I told you that button sticks. <laughs> I had forgotten about that, but he's right. I don't know if he's here, if he's watching. I don't see him up there, but I didn't get a good look. Driving in, Lee out. Sutton won't shoot it. Tend to shoot, Lee. Looking for Luby instead. Going to deck it. Drives. Gets the step. Gets the blow by and the finish. Yeah, good job, Lauren Lee there. Just kind of recognizing that that uh, path to the right was wide open. And she did a little ball fake and was able to get uh, an easy layup. It is a 20-point Campbellsville advantage. Left side. Now bouncing it down in the low block. Bender spins away from Sutton. and Throws right. up a shot in the paint. It's okay. Good defense there by Sutton. Warren Lee back to the front court, 18 points the margin. 48-30, 2.50 to play in the third quarter. Lee looking inside, wants Luby, has her. Double team comes, Luby back out to Nally. The entry again, ball deflected and stolen away. And again, Campbellsville at times trying to force feed the post and give credit to Freed Hardeman, Saturday. I believe had the takeaway, went all the way down and laid it in. 48-32 to score. Lee on the dribble. Right side, this is Bertram. Back door wanted Lee. I don't know if Saturday got a hand on that or not. Gets the screen, does Lee, throws up a shot. We're going to foul called against. Saturday looked almost like she hurt her leg when she reached out for that pass. Then Luby set the hard screen, and she's limping a little bit. Who'd they get on that They foul? get that on uh, Bender. I've got her with three. I got her with three. Did PA say two? PA said two there, but we're gonna keep we're gonna keep at it. Saturday gonna check out for a moment. Free throw for Lee is good. No, it's we got three on the stats. Boyle and Pettigo at the table to check in. And the second free throw is good. Bertram and Lauren Lee will get breathers. For Campbellsville, you've got uh, Boyle, Pedigo, Pritchett, Nally, and Sutton. Freed Hardeman has Purvine, White, Fleming, Baher, and uh, looking for that fifth one, that's Bender. 50 to 32 the score, just under two minutes now to play in the third quarter. Ball taken away. Bender wanted a cutting Purvine down the baseline. Courtney Pritchett stole it away. Pritchett. Gets the bounce pass inside. She has Maddie Nally, who has two points. Yeah, great uh, transition there by the Lady Tigers. Barr in a bit of a trap. Needs some help. Flashing is white. Throws up a shot off glass that is good. Nice job by Barr. Not to panic. Long ahead. Pedigo has Nally again. Stops. Kicks it out. Left side shooter. Sutton three. No good. Rebound is knocked out of bounds, last touched by Maddie Nally. He's good look. 34 the score. Good luck by Sutton there. Good transition offense for Lady Tigers and they found an open Sutton. She just was failed to knock it down. Left wing, Baher inside cutting out Pervine. She's worked that baseline all night long. Fleming, Pervine on the opposite side of the baseline, tries to throw one off, uh, off of uh, Pritchett out of bounds and it's Sutton with the foul. A foul on Sutton there. Got a little body contact. That is two on Sutton and four on Campbellsville as a club. 107 to play in the period. 52-34. They lob it in deep to Bender. And now Pervine, the intended target ball, too far. And they're going to have to try to reset the shot clock again. More issues. And they're finally at resets, but Campbellsville got an extra four or five seconds. And they'll try to set it to 23. And this is 
frustrating for all parties involved. Well, it's a, it's a brand new, I think it's a brand new remote, uh, is what uh, Michaela uh, Jarman said. And it's not communicating, she said, properly to the box. So uh, may, may have to go back to that old one. That's not good. When I get a brand new remote at home, I don't communicate with my wife. Well, well that's for true. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> 52-34, Maddie Nally, far side. Bounces, Pritchett, Boyle, looking for Sutton. Dribbles through now. That's and a hold. we've got a hold yeah. down inside. There's Pervine going to be whistled for her third foul. It's going to send Courtney Pritchett to the free throw line here for the Lady Tigers. You look at that post up that Courtney Pritchett had. She was working. She was working it. So... Good, good effort here tonight from Courtney. You know, we, you and I had texted a few times wondering uh, kind of how her, her performance would be tonight. But uh, this is exactly, I think, what we had hoped we'd see from her. Great, great effort tonight on both ends of the court and uh, what's been a tough week for her. But uh, she is just one uh, special young lady. Birdstown's finest. Yes. Courtney Pritchett, one more. And that free throw is good. It's both. I feel like we've said that much tonight about Lady Tigers at the free throw line. It's been one of those evenings. Yeah, 14 to 21, uh, 67%. So it's slowly creeping up. Uh, one thing I'm surprised though is freed from the free throw line. Two of seven, 28%. They're normally a 72% shooting team from the line. 54-34, 20 point Campbellsville advantage. About five seconds of the differential between the shot and game clocks. Doesn't matter as Flaming knocks that one down. And Campbellsville will have all kinds of time as Pedigo did a nice job there, Benji. She didn't chase that ball and try to dribble it. She let it come back right. down and bounce so there was no infraction. Left side, Nally, seven to shoot. Pritchett holds it at the elbow. Nally going to take the long two. That is in and out for Nally. Pedigo had it. She and Pervine tied it up, and they'll let that be a play on, which is uh, beneficial to the Lady Tigers as they'll have the basketball to begin the fourth quarter. 54-37, your score. Campbellsville leads it. You're following the Lady Tigers on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. Four thirty-seven. our scores. We head to the fourth quarter. The Lady Tigers, number three team in the country, leading Freed Hardeman, who received votes in this latest NAI poll. And those of you following along on our uh, video coverage tonight, Lauren Lee, some of her handiwork getting down inside, getting the finish there for Campbellsville University. And what was that uh, midnight breakfast? Is that what Josh Spencer says? That I, like I, leading up to finals week? It, it is. And the, with uh, next week being finals, I think that's something they started years ago and have continued on. So kind of give students a little study break while uh, they're studying for finals. Midnight breakfast. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll be in bed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if I'm eating at midnight, it's darn sure not breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Something's went awry. Yes. Uh, that's a late night snack. Yes, anyway. it is. 54-37. Campbellsville to work here with the basketball. Pritchett left side. Won't shoot it. Pettigo go back to Lee. 15 to shoot now. Boyle with the entry. Morning Wilkes. Ball knocked away. Boyle just taps it back to Pritchett. It's a headsy play. Pritchett out to Pettigo. A couple of dribbles. Six seconds. The entry now. Wilkes spinning. Nice, strong move. And finally, Gatlin Wilkes. Gets uh, on the board with a field goal. She had a free throw in the first half. 55-37. It's good patience there by the Lady Tigers to uh, work it around and, and, and find an open Wilkes down low. Bender kicks it out. Open shooter on that far side is Berkey. That shot no good. Wilkes the rebound. Shovels it ahead here. It's a Pettigo. Wants to run. Pritchett can't shoot. Back to Pettigo. Kit Cattle let it ride. Three on the way. Ooh. And... Uh, she was two of two on the season, and you could see she, Pritchett just laughing about that one. <laughs> and 
<laughs> she was why I was open, Coach. And he actually, yeah. Coach Galvin. Yeah, she nodded she her head. She yes. said, that's okay. That's all right. And, uh, well, now she's back to 50% in her career. She missed her only attempt last year. She hit. She's hit both of her two this season entering plate tonight. Satterley inside finds a wide open Bauer. You can't uh, be any more open than that. And this ball knocked away up into the air. Pettigo, ooh, tough spill. Bender saves it, has bar, and now Satterley holds it. 13 to shoot, inside, cut off, back out. Bender at the free throw line, nice pass inside. Berkey dribbles through and gets the finish. It's a nice job by Berkey to uh, get herself into a position to finish that shot. Not that you, I'm not rooting for the away no, team by it's, any it's stretch, good offense. but Absolutely. she was rewarded there for yeah. a patient approach offensively here. Pritchett decks it, gonna drive in, dumps one down inside. She's got Wilkes, who's got two more. Yeah, great, great possession. Courtney was able to penetrate. The defense came over to help. She was able to dish it to Wilkes. That's his textbook basketball right there. Lee gives chase to Satterley, who goes on around to Fleming. Elbow inside. Bender has Berkey missed that shot and ball knocked away. Pettigo did a nice job on that rebound to poke it free. Pritchett comes away with it. Pettigo left side, shovels it back. Open shooter is Swiss. Three in and out. Wilkes the rebound and she is whacked and foul. This will be on Satterley and that is four now on Rachel Satterley. Josh Spencer and I are gonna have to have a conversation. I've got Satterley with four. And so does the stats. So replay there of the Wilkes bucket. Sutton in for Campbellsville as Bailey Pedigo checks out. The Lady Tigers again have Bethel coming to the Powell Center on Saturday. Then next Thursday, a week from tonight, Cumberland's comes to Tiger Town and two on the road, Georgetown and Asbury. Asbury, of course, a non-conference game as Wilkes hits the first free throw. And Wilkes creeping closer to double figures after what has been kind of a Long night, only one Lady Tiger in double figures thus far. That's Maddie Boyle. Wilkes gets both. 60 to 39 the score. Right side on the wing is Fleming. Out top, Satterley, back to Fleming. Down on the end line, Berkey finds Chumley. Nice job by Freed Hardeman to get another bucket. Saltana Wise walked by there a moment ago, Benji. She's, she knows a thing or two about wins in this building here. Yes, she sure does. Here. Her name rests on the court right in front of us. Inside, that is Chumley. Shot no good, stays with it. A third chance, and finally the whistle sounds as Chumley will go to the free throw line. This will be on Campbellsville's Maddie Boyle, her first, first on CU. Bertram gonna check in for Boyle here. So Chumley at the line, 50% on the season entering play tonight. First free throw off the mark for Chumley, who is now 0 of 3 on the evening. And before I forget, I just want to congratulate Coach Ginger High Colvin and Josh Epperson for getting it right in the sweats yes, this evening. Absolutely. Let's be done with collared shirts and ties. I know they look terrific, but not necessary for a That's one college thing, basketball game. That's a good game. thing that has actually come out of COVID, I think. Shot by Lee is no good. The rebound taken in by Freed Hardeman. I agree, Benji. There is no need to coach in a suit and tie. Inside, circling, shot up off glass is good for Chumley. 60 to 44. Freed Hardeman, uh, maybe one of their best offensive stretches here, Benji, the last few possessions inside. Wilkes gonna throw up a shot that goes off the back of the iron. She'll go back to the free throw line. On Chumley. And that's four on Chumley. Is that the second team foul here in the, the quarter? It is. Okay. I missed one. Free throw here for Wilkes on the way is good. Nice crowd on hand here tonight yeah, as well. It is. We haven't really talked about that yet, but uh, you know, behind us, a large contingent of Tiger and Lady Tiger fans. 
And we got a couple parents in the, the crowd where they're, uh, the McGeorges are, are back supporting. They can't stay away. They can't. They, they're on a different side, though. I don't know if I like Joel behind yeah, me. I like, like him in on. front where I can keep it's an eye on him. Side here, Chumley shot no good. Wilkes missed that second free throw. Freed Harden with an opportunity down there. Come up empty. Pritchett here is fouled by Baher. Four on Baher, three on the Lady Lions. Lauren Lee, far side. Bar defends. Sutton back to Lee. I come near side now. Inside Wilkes. Wilkes gonna go to work. Spins left hand off glass. You betcha. That is a spin cycle right there. Quick. Nice touch off the glass. Look at that gets Wilkes into double figures now. It does. 63-44 Saturday. Left side bar. Wants to drive. On the inline, ball knocked away from behind by Bertram, but she also got a large chunk of Chumley. And this will be the third on Burt. Two on the Lady Tigers as a club. See a shot here of Wilkes down inside. Gathers goes up that left hand. Hard to defend that one. It is. Satterley pitches it out deep. She's got KJ White here. And she knocks Ooh, Bertram oh. to the ground. I'll tell you what, Benji, that is a call, but if this game is a five-point game, That's a big call. there are a yeah. lot of upset folks. Well, and it's uh, – the forearm was extended. Yeah, that was the issue. And, and he was straight-lined, and I don't think he saw that. So Pitch it back out of that court to yeah. K.J. White and Freed Hardeman. Back to work inside. That's a nice spin move for Chumley. Steps through, but a nice – Defensive effort by Wilkes to block the shot. Campbellsville the other way. Bertram left side, triple, no good. Rebound, Pritchett needs some help as the ball goes to the deck. We're gonna go to the arrow and that will Freed Hardman. go the direction of the Lions. And this will bring us, nope, not a stoppage yet. The Lady Tigers were going to the bench like uh, Thought it was media, but yeah, it's, we're, we're 12 seconds. seconds. Yeah. Before we get there, 63-44. Don't forget the Tigers and Lions coming up at the conclusion of our women's game. We'll visit with Ginger High Colvin as well prior to that. Satterley driving in, throws a floater with the right hand. Shot no good, and Pritchett, the rebound for Campbellsville, tries to keep it free of two. Defenders long ahead. She has Sutton. Now Bertram. Out top, Pritchett. Lee. Back the other way. Sutton open. Three on the way. Bang! Sarah Sutton, another Edward Jones cash in. You could tell from the get-go that she was wanting that. Yeah. And uh, she got her feet right and was nice. Ball back tap by, I believe, Bertram. Came off to Pritchett. Pritchett's got to watch it. It's back tap from her. Lee the other way. She gives chase to White. Knocks it free. White shot up off glass. No good. How about the defensive effort for the Lady Tigers? Nice hustle. Good in hustle. a 22-point game, they yeah. get back, and it's at least going to force Freed Hardeman to uh, do some work in the half court. Well, it was good defense on both ends. Even Freed Hardeman coming down here and getting the tap out. So uh, two teams that, uh, you know, are, are wanting wanting this victory here. Uh, now we've got the media now timeout. The media but timeout. yeah, great effort there by the Lady Tigers there on that uh, exchange. Brie Gowdy going to re-enter. 5'5 freshman guard from Campbellsville, Kentucky. She played a few moments there late in the first half uh, for defensive purposes. And uh, while well, we've got a timeout here, we'll step away as well. Campbellsville leads the basketball game 66-44. to You're following the Lady Tigers on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. Jason, let's go see your room.
66-44, the count. The Lady Tigers lead by 22 points with just four minutes and 16 seconds remaining. Matt Payton and Benji Kelly with you in the Powell Center. The Lady Tigers have uh, gotten rolling from deep here tonight. Benji, Sarah Sutton in large part, a uh, big part of that act, I should say. She and Maddie Boyle, five made Edward Jones threes in this ball game, and it is terrific to see Sutton see the ball go through the net. Yeah, it is. You know, she's been limited in min minutes uh, this season, uh, averaging about nine, but uh, almost double that here tonight and, and shooting the ball really well. KJ White, long three is good for White. She got freed up and sinks the triple. Bree Gowdy in there running the point here for Campbellsville. Gowdy, uh, her dad Bronson over there on the far side, her uncle Brian and I see uh, Phil Gowdy over there as well. Nice. This ball knocked out of play. Nice hands. Get lucky every now and then. 66-47. <laughs> Campbellsville back to work here. And she'll come short to Boyle to pitch it in. So that set play not there. Sutton holds it. Six to shoot. Lady Tiger's going to have to go. Gowdy driving in, flicks one up. Shot is uh, off the bottom of the backboard. Bree Gowdy really had nothing else to do, Benji. Just no, tried to throw that's something right. up inside. They've got Pervine. Nally jumps. Pervine shot no good. Stays with it. Nally almost just takes that one away. That's just the product of being 6'2". Six 6'2", six, two. Six, two <laughs> with a long reach. <laughs> Gowdy out front. Right side, Nally. Dribbles left and comes back to the right side to Boyle. Just over three minutes to play. Sutton, Nally, they want Wilkes. Wilkes, the entry out to Sutton, gonna get the screen. Eight to shoot, Nally has Wilkes working inside, kicks it out, Boyle, shooter. Bang! Maddie Boyle, another Edward Jones three. She's got three tonight as well. I don't believe her mom, Tracy, was here. She was on a trip. Dad's sitting behind us here, uh, but, yeah. but that, Jeremy's here. That shot, you could tell as soon as she released it, it was on point. 69-47, White, the jumper, banks it in off glass. A little, little late kiss. night bank shot. Yeah, a little kiss off the glass there. Nice jump shot. 69-49, Nally hands it to Boyle. Comes off the Nally screen. Purvine picks her up and knocks it into the Lady Tiger bench. 20-point game, two and a half minutes to play. Campbellsville on their way to victory number six. Katie Arms going to check in, 5'6", sophomore guard from Salina, Tennis, uh, Salina, Tennessee. And then Morgan Quick, 5'11", sophomore guard from Sparta, Tennessee. Wilkes gets the assist on that made three-pointer by Boyle a moment ago, as you see it there. I thought they tried to throw me another one there, Benji. Yeah, he's trying. You, you got any really? eligibility left? Man, man. I can set a screen after that. It's all, <laughs> it's all dicey. 69-49. Free Gowdy, right corner, Sutton. Boyle on the dribble, working left side, out to Gowdy. Gowdy driving through, some contact, goes up a shot, and Bree will go to the free throw line here. K.J. White. Four on Freed Hardeman as a club. Bree Gowdy is still looking for her first field goal as a Lady Tiger. But uh, she's had no issues at the free throw line. Bree, second on the all-time scoring list at Campbellsville High School. Number one on that list was coached by Ginger High Calder. Uh, pretty sure that's Tasha Phillips. Yes. And uh, I don't think she's Phillips anymore, but it's Tasha Corey now. But uh, Gowdy gets both free throws. She's a perfect four of four. And somewhere high on that list, maybe third, is Deasha Atkinson, who's a Lady Tiger here. 71-49. Bender inside, gets around Luby. Ooh. Bender with a nice strong move, gets the finish, and Kayla Luby picks up her third foul. 71-51 the count. Bertram will walk over and talk to her head coach. You can hit Juliet Rivera Morales into the lineup. I should have asked Ian Lopez, who's running camera down here to my right, how to say uh, Morales from Columbia, and I don't mean the one 20 minutes up the road. <laughs> Ian uh, Camrop down here on the right. He's a swimmer. He's also from Columbia. I should have asked him uh, how to pronounce her hometown, Yopal Casanare. 
sure that's uh, not correct. Inside, going to work. Was that Luby? It was. Shot no good. K.J. White, the rebound, is uh, down on the other end. Bender missed that free throw a moment ago. So we'll go to the arrow, and it stays with the Lady Tigers. Taryn Kyle going to check in, 5'4", junior guard from Madison, Tennessee. Gowdy to Nally, now Bertram. Back to Nally, dribbles in, backing away as the defender closes out. Bertram driving left side of the lane, throws up a shot, won't go. And the rebound taken in here by Quick. And she'll bring it to the offensive end, chased down by Bertram. It's a 20-point lead, just over 90 seconds to play in the ball game. Arms, and this pass deflected and stolen. Here comes Gowdy the other way. Bree Gowdy inside, throws up a shot off glass, no good. Couldn't get it to go. And to the other end, it's Arms. Works left side. Luby blocks it. Arms spills to the ground hard. No call. And Campbell's go back the other way. Gowdy has Bertram. Bounces inside Luby. And she's whacked and fouled here by Quick. And Campbellsville will send Kayla Luby to the free throw line with one minute and eight seconds remaining. Well, it's a good, good victory here for this Lady Tiger team here tonight, Matt. You know, you and I had talked earlier in the week expecting this game to uh, – to be a tough one, but Campbellsville has just come out, and you know the first first quarter it was fairly close, but they kind of extended, uh, kind of got on the offensive run there in the second quarter, and then in the second half it's been pretty much uh, all Campbellsville. Uh, Freed Harbin just couldn't really get over that shooting slump. Uh, they've been around around that 33 to 38 percent all night long. Uh, Campbellsville. Obviously, uh, it played a, a much better half in the second half. Shot the ball better from the free throw line, 69% compared to Freed Hardman, who's 3 of 10 for the evening, which is very uncharacteristic of them. Campbellsville empties the bench and sends new players into the lineup here. The jumper for quick is good. Bring Gowdy to basketball. Paige Evans out there, 5'3", freshman guard from Hodgenville, Kentucky. Kalen Mills, 5'5", freshman guard from Flat Lick. Kentucky, Shelby Beatty out there, 5'3", freshman guard. She's not 5'3", freshman guard from Owensboro. Or excuse me, uh, I was looking at Paige Evans. Beatty from Owensboro, 5'11", freshman guard. She hits the three-point field goal. She is uh, much like Sutton and uh, yes. Bertram. Has yes. gun, will shoot, and yes. throw it away. Gowdy picks it off. She'll come down, left side of the lane, goes up the shot up high. And that's it's good. Do the uprights. Be out of bounds. I don't know if Bree gets a bonus to look over. Bronson's got his hand on his head. <laughs> He's like, I didn't teach you how to do that. Uh, I'm going to have to ask her if she uh, got those. But she's smiling. She just had too much on it. Yeah. Paige Serafini in there as well. 5'11", freshman guard from Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. Three on the way. No good. Mills the rebound as Morales missed the shot. Shot clock is off. And Kayla Mills will give it away to Beatty. And now Gowdy with it, and 75-53 good win. will be your final score as the Lady Tigers pick up the victory. Campbellsville moves to 6-0 on the season. They are 4-0 now in Mid-South Conference play. Freed Hardeman 8-1 on the year now, losing their first game of the season here tonight. 3-1 in Mid-South Conference play as we'll wait for Ginger High Colvin to make her way over and we'll visit with her in uh, in just a moment. So the, uh, the Lady Tigers get the win. We'll look at the stats here in uh, just a moment as the guys are ready to race out onto the floor as soon as everything is all cleared up here. Campbellsville finishes 42% from the field. They were 23 of 54, 9 of 23 from long range, 39%, and uh, 20 of 29 from the free throw line, 69%. Freed Hardeman uh, finishes 36, 39% uh, from the floor, 22 of 56. Three point percentage for Freed Hardeman, 25%, 6 of 24, and then free throws, 3 of 10 for the uh, Lions, just 30%. Joining me at the table, the uh, head coach here, Ginger High Colvin. Campbellsville gets the win over Freed Hardman. Coach, I know that's a Freed Hardman team that uh, you've had kind of uh, preparing for. Mm -hmm. 
things that, that worried you, as most teams in this Mid-South Conference do. <laughs> right. uh, yeah. I, don't think, I don't think of the possible outcomes you necessarily thought 22 points and no, a 22-point um, win would happen. They've had two good wins um, already. They beat Bethel and beat Pikeville, who I think are two two nice teams in the in the conference. And then he's got uh, the conference's leading scorer right now, I think, yeah. in Saturday if, no, if nobody's bumped her out. And uh, they can really spread you out and shoot it. And they, uh, we knew they were going to pack it in on us today. And um, we, uh, we hadn't seen anybody that had really come in and zoned us. So, honestly, it's good for us to be able to, to see how to, to work against that, give our kids some, some time now to, to see what we need to do. But I was proud of them. I thought we did a pretty good job defensively. We turned the ball over way too much the first half. I think it looks like we only turned it over four times the second half. But um, we stepped up and hit some shots today. Matty Bull, I know, hit some, some big shots for us. And, uh, but Freed does have a – they're young. The, they lost a lot from last year. Satterley was on their bench last year but red-shirted, and uh, she's just coming in and, and doing a, a really good job for them. Uh, sight for sore eyes, so to speak, for Lady Tiger fans. Sarah Sutton gets back out there tonight. Yep. And, uh, we just need Sarah Sutton to shoot, right? And, that's uh, right. So, so she, yep. uh, that's a little tongue-in-cheek. You and I had talked about it a little bit. But she needed a result like this, mm -hmm. and uh, tonight she hit some big ones for you guys. Well, you know, there's some kids that have the green light, and then there's some kids that have the neon green light, and hers is neon green. <laughs> she, We know Sarah can come in, and she is just God-given talent with, with being able to shoot the ball. And uh, she's, she's really had a struggle this first semester, and it was, it was really nice to see her get back out in a big game like this and knock down some big shots for us. She and Maddie Boyle both uh, providing some of the heavy lifting. Early in the game, Courtney Pritchett, uh, that rudder in the water for you guys. I know it's been a, a troubling week for mm -hmm. her and her family, and, and obviously we wish them the best, but she came out, had six quick ones uh, yeah. against a team like this, and uh, she kind of, there was a lull there after that, but it, so often it just kind of got you going. Yeah. And every, you knew at that moment everything's going to be yeah, fine. Yeah, you do. She, uh, um, you know, she's just uh, the type of kid that's never going to let you down. She's never going to break your heart, and uh, she's just going to come in and give you absolutely everything that she's got every time she plays. And even if she's not got, uh, you know, I look and see she has eight points, but she was as important as anybody on the floor for us tonight. She finishes with five steals uh, in the ball game, four assists. So, so often, you know, some things that may not st show up in that point right. column and different yeah. things that jump out, but steady as ever. And, uh, you know, your, your post play tonight, Coach, you got some foul trouble uh, from Caitlin Wilkes, and that gives Kayla Luby a chance to come in, nine right. points, eight rebounds. And speaking mm -hmm. of neon green, three-point uh, lights, <laughs> Caitlin Wilkes is not neon green, but it's green. It, uh, it, it was green, and now it's like it's it's – Flickering, maybe. It, yeah, it is flickering. So we're we're gonna have to talk about that. But no, Kayla, she can really shoot the ball. <laughs> but she had a that maybe that was the worst one of the year for her. But uh, yes, we'll we'll definitely get to talk about that one and make some fun of her for it. But talk to me about Kayla Luby, coach nine and eight. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, again, she's someone you roll in there off that second right. unit, and you, you kind of know what you're gonna get. And again, steady as ever. Yeah, and a great day for Kayla because her family yeah. was able to come in and and watch her play live. So I think she was probably a little bit nervous. She's been great from the free throw line, and I think she stood there and missed her first two tonight. Yeah. Well, she, and, she had missed one. Okay. She was 93%, but, yeah, tonight she missed yeah, more than she had Yeah, and that's uncharacteristic for her, but, you know, that's a lot to ask a kid to come in, and uh, she's going to – she'll figure it out. She'll be in here in the morning shooting free throws, I'm sure. But uh, she's a strong kid, and she plays extremely hard. And to have her when, when Kate got in foul trouble to go out and give us those minutes is uh, – you know, they've been sharing that, that post spot minutes, and it was uh, we had to ask a little bit more over the first half minute-wise because Kate uh, was in foul trouble. I know uh, it, it, the, the pool here, we were rooting for John Weathington and Chris Nelson to go to about six overtimes uh, over exactly. in Columbia. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, those two teams both hungry for a win. You get Bethel here on um, on Saturday, and that's mm -hmm. a, a Bethel club. Obviously, you and, and Coach Nelson are great friends. It's right. a close close game. Uh, halftime, I think, a three-point Lindsey Wilson lead. Okay. But, uh, you know, Bethel, always a fun matchup, always mm -hmm. a tough matchup. Always a tough matchup. They, uh, they shoot the ball. They have kids that have range. He's got one of the best freshmen in the league, uh, probably. If my, uh, well, Saturday, uh, we're going to probably face the two best freshmen in the league this weekend, and um, we've got to really do our job there. And they do such a great job in the dribble drive, kicking the ball out. Uh, they'll play hard defensively, and uh, they'll be ready. I'm like I say, the outcome of that one's going to be a tough one because uh, Chris and John are both good friends of mine, and um, you know somebody's got to win it, somebody's got to lose it, but. 
we've got uh, we've got our hands full with Bethel coming in here on Saturday. And everything around the league tonight was really tightly contested outside of, of this one, and then uh, Thomas Moore and, and UT Southern. But that's life in the Mid South Conference. Yeah, uh, there right. are very very few give me's, and uh, you know. Yeah, three points, a, Cumberland's and Pike. I mean, that game's still going on, a three-point game. Ten yeah. seconds to go, Cumberland, you up just a little bit over Wilberforce. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a wild league. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a very wild league. It's a league that there is just – there's not any teams that – I guess you call gimme games, teams that, you know, you think you're going to go work on some stuff. It's just uh, we've not been able to, to see Wilberforce, so I'm not sure about them yet. But I just know the rest of the teams in our league are ready to roll and ready to play us, and we have to be ready every night. Coach, congratulations. We'll do it again on Saturday. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. The Lady Tigers victorious as they uh, knock off uh, here tonight in the Powell Athletic Center. Freed Hardeman, final score of this one, 75-53. As, uh, if you guys want to kill that second mic down there for the time being while we go through stats, there's a lot of music and, and crowd noise. There you go. Uh, as we take a look here at some of the final game numbers quickly, we talked about the percentages for Campbellsville. They get a game high 14 from Maddie Boyle this evening, knocked down three, Edward Jones threes. They get double figures from Sarah Sutton off the bench. She also had three Edward Jones threes, four rebounds for Sutton in this one. Ten points for Caitlin Wilkes, who spent most of the game in some foul trouble, got rolling a bit late. Wilkes finishing with ten points, three boards, three of five shooting. CU gets nine apiece from Lauren Lee to go with seven assists and five rebounds, two steals, nine more from Kayla Luby, eight rebounds for Luby in the ballgame. Eight points for Courtney Pritchett, five rebounds, four assists, five steals for Swiss here. And this one tonight, Campbellsville off the bench, gets four points from Maddie Nally. Three points each from Shelby Beatty and Elizabeth Bertram. And two points out of the starting lineup for Bailey Pedigo. Uh, Pedigo finishes with five assists in tonight's game as well. Kaylin Mills, Paige Evans, Paige Serafini, and uh, well, those three ladies all seen time failing to score. Brie Gowdy actually had the two free throws in there. She had two points for Campbellsville as well. For Freed Hardeman, they get 11 tonight from K.J. White. Their leading scorer, Rachel Satterley, held to just eight points in this one. She was 4 of 14 from the field. They get eight more from Kayla Fleming. Seven from Ellie Chumley. Madison Barr had six, five from Reagan Purvine, four from Kelsey Bender, two each from Morgan Quick and Reese Berkey in tonight's ballgame. Campbellsville wins the battle on the glass, 33 to 26. Eight offensive rebounds for Campbellsville, just six for Freed Hardeman. Campbellsville finishes with 20 assists, 13 steals, and 12 turnovers. Freed Hardeman, 17 assists, 7 steals, and 18 turnovers in the ballgame. And head scoring quickly. Points in the paint, a two-point Freed Hardeman advantage, 26 to 24. Off turnovers, 20 to 9 in favor of CU. Second chance points, 11 to 7, again, in favor of Campbellsville. And bench points, 32 to 16. The Lady Tigers double up Freed Hardeman. The uh, score was tied once, 2 to 2, and uh, the lead changed hands, none. Throughout the ball game, the largest lead for Campbellsville was 22 points, and that is uh, also the margin here as the final score was 75 to 53. We'll step away and take an extended break. We'll come back and get you set for men's action here. As that's the second half of our Mid South Conference doubleheader for Tiger and Lady Tiger basketball. The Lady Tigers victorious. You're following the Tigers on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. When I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men. Take care of our home. Build a foundation. You know what I'm saying? 